Yay. Sorry, yeah, we just had to, apparently we had a little bit of sound issue in the beginning Yay. that we weren't noticing. It just took me a second all to fix my, it. So All of my announcements. Yay. Okay, here we are. All right. Um, so we're doing, again, for anybody who missed it, a uh, little conversion <laughs> work today. <laughs> Sorry. That's what, everybody missed it, Brian. No. <laughs> uh, also, since there's no video, Danny's also here sometimes to talk to you guys sometimes. Right. Yeah, I knew I forgot something. It's not important. <laughs> You are so important, Danny. Um, all right. Going back, um, over on the Facebook page, we um, showed off some of these uh, Trojan-inspired Temple of Menoth uh, flame guard, Temple Flame Guard that I had done. Um, and we're just going to show how I did these shields. Show them off there. Shield broke off. These are ridiculously old models. Uh, I did these like four years ago or something like that. So they've seen a lot of wear and tear and... Probably in the future, as I find more models, I'm going to do a repair thing on stream. Um, anyways, first step on this, um, I ended up having to make the shields. And what I was inspired by for this was actually somebody around the office had googly eyes, and they were sticking googly eyes on everything. So I ended up snagging one of them, and I ended up peeling off the backing of the googly eye, taking it out of there, and then using that to create the original, where did I put it? And all I did was just stuck a little bit of resin in there um, and just made the original. This is gonna be uh, the master for what we're doing for everything. I love that I'm not the only one that uses the living crowd out of googly eyes. Like I use they're googly so eyes good. so often because they're <laughs> light. They're cheap. They make rivets. And also yeah. my favorite thing is I love the rattling noise that it makes when it puts it when I put it in terrain, but everyone oh, yeah. else hates it. No, I love it. I think oh, it's great. It's so no, it's that's like, so, so much terrain fun. sounds like maracas because of the sheer amount. You can, of you yeah. can pick up a piece of Danny terrain <laughs> and just give it a little shake. And if you hear something, you're like, Yeah, I know it's how like, half of this was done. It's yeah. like my signature. Yeah. This <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, no, like go ahead. No, best, I actually man. love um, <laughs> incorporating other things into my conversions. Yeah. Uh, that aren't just purely like static. I love having movement in them. Like right. anytime that I get chains uh, on models and stuff like that, I will always try my hardest to replace the chain it. with an actual bit of jeweler's <laughs> yeah. chain. Um, so you get a little bit of jingle, right? Yeah, yeah. Or just the movement as you know moves, it swang around and stuff like that. Right. Um, now you don't have to use resin for any of this kind of stuff. What you could use is. Um, a little bit of putty if you want. Um, I've seen people use grout, uh, plaster. It doesn't really matter because, like, what you're using because plaster is not great because it's super brittle. And the glue doesn't like to, the normal super glue doesn't like to stick to no, plaster it doesn't, super well. No, it kind of absorbs in, right? Yeah, it's not super important because the master only has to survive long enough to make that initial right. casting. You're not oh, really true, using true. it for anything else. Um, so, I made this. Also very important, and I actually ran into this earlier, I ended up uh, flubbing my original casting of this because I forgot to put Vaseline on the inside of the googly eye. And what ended up happening was I poured it in there to cast it, and uh, after it cured and everything, it got stuck, and there was no way of getting it out of there. I ended up like just trying to peel the plastic off and just shredded the, the shield itself, and it's like. Oh, I see, so you actually used the, the googly eye as the mold. Yep. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, thought, it got wrecked as I was, you know, finishing it. But and so the reason why you didn't just glue down the actual googly eye and utilize that as the master is because it would have been much harder to sculpt on in the end. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll it, get to all this. Yeah, because the exciting. plastic on the googly eye, like you can see, it's just super thin and squishy. And yeah. to do the things that I need to do, it's just not going to hold up. Got it. So it's easier just to make an actual full shield of what I'm going to do. You're so smart. I try. Uh, so. Now that we've got that down, I did this ahead of time. It only took like uh, maybe an hour or so. Right, see if you can grab that uh, that autofocus. Yeah, we're trying. There, there we, we go. go. So first thing, I'm going to be doing this all the time because these guys are super slippery. Um, first thing that I'm going to do here is <clears throat> got this original shield. Uh, what I want to do is replicate this and put like the Menifix symbol right along the middle there. And then I'm going to be putting a little rim around the shield with uh, rivets on it. So what I want to do first is just go in and just rough sketch using a pencil what I'm doing or where I want putty to go just so I have like a visual reminder of where stuff goes. 
It doesn't have to be super neat or tidy or anything like that because you're just going over a lot of it anyways. You know, it's one of my favorite tools that I've picked up recently. What's that? You know those little, uh, you know those little um, flexible circle templates? You know, the ones that you get at like a uh, drafting store for like architectural plans? You know, it's semi-clear and it just has a bunch of circles cut into it. Um, um, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. The, yeah, for the like... The French thing. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like, it's in the same section as the French curve, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have one of those and I am using it so often for exactly mm -hmm. things like this. Like if I vacuum form some sort of dome and I need to cut a section of it out, I like just find that circle, drop it right on top and it's flexible enough that it can kind of press onto the surface and then draw that circle. Man, I'm using that tool so often now. Um, because like if I have to cut a hole in some sort of dome, I like draw the circle, but then I'll drill a hole and I'll use my Dremel to ease my way out to it. Does that make sense? So, it, so yeah. it, you know, so I'm not hoping that the drill bit is in the right place. I like can work my way out to this perfect circle because I used the template. Um, See, so yeah, I go to a, go to a, what's it called? Like a drafting store, or even like your office supply store and look in their drafting section, pick up a uh, little circle template. They're mm -hmm. so nice. Oh, they're so nice. All right. So I think I'm a little, little crooked on this. So I'm just... I mean, you drew that fast. Nice. Uh, believe it or not, playing Protectorate as long as I have, I'm getting pretty used to drawing these things. Yeah, right? So you're actually going in to, to clear up your mistakes. Like, yep. uh, definitely in, in a project like this where I'm freehanding something, I will go in there, make my drawing, and then if I don't like it, I'll just end up, instead of fixing the mistake, I'll try to fix it when I'm actually executing instead. Yeah, well, it, I could just acknowledge that, okay, the putty's going to go there yeah. instead, but I would rather just fix it this way, because yeah. that way the mistake doesn't carry itself down the line. Well, it's that's like that that's, measure, measure twice cut yeah. once thing, like do it right Very on the front much, end. Yeah. That's probably the right way to do it, yeah. Also, can we just talk about this pun that just flipped up on chat? Because so good. Metafixer. Okay. Uh, oh, and... I love that. <laughs> I love the Metafixer. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got the rough, rough sketch here. Close enough. Um, the next thing is we're going to be putting the putty on there. If you can see on my thumb, I've pre-mixed a bunch of putty. I actually use my thumb all the time as my palette for any sort of putty work, um, just because it's easier access and it's always right there. The I see people not do that hurt. a lot. I've never quite gotten that movement down, uh, like the where you just scoop get it used off to your it. thumb. Yeah, yeah. Um, you just get used to it. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to we can't just put the putty directly on the shield here because what will end up happening is it's a nice smooth surface. The putty won't stick, and chances are, uh, as you've cured it, waiting for it, and what you want to do is, um, after it's been cured, you want to go in and clean it up and do mm -hmm. like the finished polishing on it. Um, when you go in to do that finished carving and cleaning and scraping and stuff like that, it just increases the odds that it's going to flake off. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab some sort of a tool. I have these really fancy little um, scraper tools. Uh, they're basically, if you've watched so the streams much. before, um, rotary tool heads. So for the various rotary tools, you can get all sorts of sharp pointy bits and things that can uh, work just fine if you just stick them in a... Uh, it's a paintbrush handle. Yep, just yeah. a paintbrush handle that I've drilled into the tip. And fit that in there, and away you go. And Something else I like tips that. easily available online or at any hardware stores? Hardware stores, online, You're going to have a much stores. easier time. Yep. Forgive me, sorry to interrupt you. Yep. Uh, you're going to have a much easier time finding it on like a jeweler's craftsman supply yeah. site, right? Than yeah. like just at like Home Depot. It, uh, it's... I've got a few of them just at... Really? Yeah. Nice. Okay, good. Just good, at, good, good. Just at uh, whatever. During the move, I stumbled upon a box of them like mm -hmm. that somebody had made in the yep. past. I stumbled on like one of those small little kits of them, and it made my day. I oh my god, those are so nice. So all I'm doing here is just gouging up the surface right about where I was putting those marks, which is why it was so important that I get that as close to pos uh, close to what I want as possible, because th I'm now etching it in and just roughing up, scouring the surface a bit, so that I can have something that the putty will anchor a little bit more to. Hey, Brian. Yep. Do you plan to do very much work close down to the mat? Because if you are, 
then I will leave it as is. But otherwise, I'm going to change that camera to just focus right there and uh, keep it there. I think actually most of my work is going to be right about here. Okay. Yeah. So let me sneak around and change that focus. Sure. So right now, Brian, it looks like you're kind of um, dropping pilot grooves onto the the main vertices of yep. the design, correct? So that so that when you want to chisel in these hard edges, uh, you know you're going to have a really strong bonding point, correct? That's our yeah. idea here is... Uh, basically, I'm just kind of like looking at it as a like pumpkin carving right. kind Connect of a thing. So you just kind of, of like gouge out the main idea of it, and then I'll just go in and just scratch up the surface and just really... Right. Yet another reason why pouring resin into the backside would have been yeah, very useful. Yeah, if I had done this, I would have just popped right through, and right. the putty <clears> probably would have stuck fairly well to that because it would just go through, but then I'd have to clean up the back and everything too. Right. You you could use Danny's power drill to do this work as well, but oh, I, think, I think if you did, someone's definitely losing an eye. I totally would use a power drill for this, without a question, 100%. But that's because I'm dumb. <laughs> Brian does this much. <laughs> Brian actually, like, no, th that was not a, this would be more efficient or a better way to do this. It's just I'm an idiot. Um, no, it, this is... <laughs> Uh, this has just been a lot of trial and error for me. Like I've done this now. Like this is my second one. That's right. the actual like good copy that I originally did. Um, the first time I did, I don't know, seven, eight renditions of trying to get it right. right. And a lot of it is just like trying it. Oh, it doesn't work. Well, let's just what went wrong. Try it again. Yeah. So one of my one of my first jobs out of college uh, after my internship was I worked on a show called Robot Chicken. And uh, one of my mentors on that show, um, like one of the people that was training me, they told me they're very much the biggest tool for the job type of person where they, you know, they don't want to have to make a million cuts. So they use like a giant brush if they can, because it holds the most paint or, you know, a large saw so that it, it can remove material faster. And so I kind of took that to heart a little too much. You know, that, you know, <laughs> like, like that actually kind of translates to uh, <laughs> when I'm doing a lot of painting and stuff. Um, I started off by getting really into like, I need the super like yeah. <laughs> ultra tiny super brush, like tiniest, like single hair brush to do any sort of detail. Right. And then as I'm getting like more and more practice, um, I'm finding that I'm actually going up in brush yeah. sizes. And now it's like, I'm using a, oh, I can't, it's been a while since I've actually painted. Um, like a three aught probably. Yeah, I, and like, it's like, yeah. I'm painting eyes with like, a size, a yeah, size two brush, two, and it's exactly. like, how no, do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. So <laughs> Jordan never goes below like a size two. It's insane. Yeah. So like, well, I was gonna say that um, since you have your working tools, Danny, you've got your tools, Brian. You have your tools. Painters have have tools. Um, and what are like the wide range of tools you have available? I'm assuming that there's like one or two tools that are doing. 80 to 90% of your, your work, mm -hmm. what, uh, what would those tools be? Uh, my big one is this guy right here. It's just a humble pin vise with a little diamond tipped, uh, super fine rotary tool tip stuck in there. So instead of the drill bit, I've got so smart. just this little handy guy right there. Uh, just a little rat tail is what we call them. I don't know what the technical term is. But it's a yeah, it's a rat tail diamond yeah. diamond burr. But um, this this guy right here, I use for like ninety percent of my work. It cleans mold lines. Is that, it, is that the diamond burr? Or is that the carbide one with the teeth uh, on it? It's the diamond. It's the diamond burr. Yeah, this is the diamond Sorry one. So it's super fine. Yeah. Uh, the other one that is like the major workhorse is just the old uh, curved blade scalpels. Um, super good. I don't use the tipped ones except for very limited circumstances, but these guys here, in fact, like even this, I could use this and just scratch up the surface. And just, instead of using the blade like this and uh, scratching it like. Well, instead of it. like cutting into yeah, it. Cut, and, instead yeah. of like scraping it like that where I'd be trying to use it for getting a smooth uh, surface, I'll just flip it around and use just the tip to scratch in and rough up that area. Now, 
This area here, I don't need to be super precise with anything. It's just roughing up the area enough to give, the, uh, give it a little bit of tooth. It's kind of like when you prime a miniature, the primer's giving it the tooth for that uh, paint to stick and really do its thing. Oh, see, that's a nice metaphor to think about. So this process is like uh, priming your, your surface, yeah. your resin with... Uh, yeah, just a, okay. Or like if anyone, you know. I was just going to repeat exactly what you said, but I was just trying to solidify the visual. No, and that's a great way to look at it. Like anyone that went to, you know, elementary school and did like ceramics at all, you know, mm -hmm. they used to teach you how to make those like pinch pots and you had mm -hmm. to score it yep, with your you fork, remember, mm -hmm. and add that like slip slurry. It's the exact same thing, right? Yeah, You're scoring I, it before you add the glue. Yeah, um, and I completely forgot the, uh, the term for it. Score so... It. My answer for that question that you were asking takes a little longer because I do so many different things, right? It really, really depends on whether or not I'm building. So I'll give you like two kits and I'll try to go quick about it. Uh, if I'm building terrain, I have a different kit than when I'm building like, that, than when I'm like sculpting something large, like a statue or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if I'm doing like Sculpey and sculpting like a statue, I tend to use, um, I have a paintbrush that I ground down so it almost looks like a fingertip. Mm -hmm. um, I use this, so I have that and I soak it in super glue so it glides across the clay really nicely. Um, I have a wire loop tool. Um, and then on the other end of it, I made, I make most of my sculpting tools. Yep. Uh, so I have a wire end made of music wire with a little bit of a rake kind of on it. And then I have a, uh, uh, what's it called? A bass guitar string loop on the oh, other okay, side yep, to yep. use as a finer rake. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I get a lot of mileage out of a scalpel. Um, come, come down a little bit, Brian. Oh, sorry. And uh, and then I have a big like flat piece of wood that I use a ton um, that I also soaked in super glue and sanded. Uh, so I get a lot done with those tools for clay sculpting. Um, now for model making, it really depends on. What I'm doing, if I'm doing a ton of foam work, I basically stick to two tools. So I'm doing a lot of like, you know, pink foam. I have a big, actually, my most used tool is one of those big snap off blade knives. You know, like the big just box lost cutter. My putty. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I can't help but point out that, that you're having a little bit of, a, of trouble just getting it to, to <laughs> stick on there. So proving the point how important it is to, Add some scoring yeah. and do some prep work. Yeah, and the idea here is just really cramming it on there. So just using a bunch of different tools, I got... Uh, come come down in the frame a bit. Yeah. There you go. Just this little dental tool that I've got. Oh, that's a really pretty little pick. Where'd you get that guy? Uh, came in a big old kit that I found online. Uh, oh, just that's nice. Show me the other end. Nice. That's yeah. a great tool. Yeah. I get tool envy sometimes. And yours are so shiny. Yeah, it's just this one set. The, a few of the other sets that I have are like really dingy, and it's like, why would anybody use this for a dental tool? <laughs> um, so just cramming the putty on there, kind of following that line that I got. Did you make that tool too? What's that blade on there? Oh, this one here? Yeah. It is actually the exact blade of this. It's just one of my sharps uh, once it got dull. Nice. I just took a bit of sandpaper and just ground it down so that it's actually super smooth now and it works really well for putty. That's uh, awesome. See, we make a lot of, that's kind of what I'm saying. We make a ton of our own tools. Like after you do this enough, like day in, day out, you'll find like, this is the exact shape I want to do this sort of motion. Yep. Um, you know, some people have a different hand grip than others. So they'll want to like modify, you know, I put those, what are they like the little pencil, um, grip things i put those on like all of my like scalpels and stuff mm -hmm. you know um and i like to point out the obvious which is that as there are always best practices and professionals have ways and share techniques that just find what works for you if you're getting the job done it really doesn't matter what tool you're using if you're not using this specific blade or yeah, this specific like, tool. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Do you like, want to jump on that? Yeah, this I've is got one of my uh, hard stances. And like <laughs> I've got a bunch. Like I've I just will pick up uh dental tool kits yeah. if I find them on the cheap somewhere or like um various different sizes of whatever. Well it's and like it, an addiction. Like I collect yeah. I like no I collect old weird tools. Yeah. But do I use all of them? Well, what yeah, I, but not what always. I actually do with them is uh, I'll just set them aside, and then every now and then it's like, man, I really need a very specific tool that does this one very yeah. specific thing, and then 
that's basically it. I have, yeah, I have all of these weird like pieces of metal that I've stuck into pieces of wood in case I need to do this very particular pattern when I'm rolling clay out. Um, I have like tubes that I've ground in certain ways to like, and I've stuck them into you know paintbrush handles, and it doesn't take up much room. Like I have a box, yeah. right? But I have all of these random tools for random jobs, and having this, you know, saving these over time, like it might seem dumb, like, oh, I need this one tool that will make this one weird star-shaped mark when I poke it. Like, but when you need that start, when you do this day in, day out, you'd yep. be surprised how many times you actually end up needing that one little star-shaped mark. Like if I needed that once during the month, that saved me four hours having that thing, not having to remake a stamp or something for it. Like, yep. and that matters when you're on deadline. Um, and, and that's like one of my hard stances, right, is, is there's no right tool. Like there's, everybody swears by like, oh man, I use this one tool and it changed how I sculpt. I'm like, that's great that it changed how you sculpt. Something yeah. that's really important is to find the right tool for you. We can show you a million different things, a million different ways to do stuff, but like you gotta find what works for you. Yeah, if you don't like it, don't use it. Now I'm gonna get off my soapbox. Uh, we did. We did have a question <laughs> from Brother Chaplain Cage on Twitch. Uh, he says when he, or it's not really a, a, a question, but a statement. When he needs some thin putty to stick to a smooth surface, he'll put down a little stripe of super glue using the blade of an old hobby knife. How do you feel about that, Brian? Um, I don't like mixing super glue with like wet putty work um, because it, for me, and it's just my own working style is that super glue will inevitably get somewhere that I don't want it to, usually my finger and usually the part that I'm working on. And then I have to clean my skin off of a part. And I don't <laughs> like dealing with that. See, and this is, this is a perfect example of everybody has their own way of working. I do that all the time. Come in down fact, to the center, Ryan. In fact, like instead of, and, and Brian's way of doing what he did with the, uh, where he scored it is far cleaner and more efficient. Um, but it, in it, like I would have gravitated towards using super glue, but I'm sloppy and I move very, very fast. And Brian is a far more meticulous, clean fabricator than I am. Um, and so that's the thing. It's all just what works for you, right? Like, I don't think I even have fingerprints anymore. So <laughs> cleaning a little bit of yeah. flesh nub won't matter. To, Raise you know, your like, chat hand if you've lost <laughs> skin to super glue before. Right, right, right? Here. Yep. Every day of my yep. life. You know you have a problem when at the end of the day you just take your hand to the belt sander. <laughs> like that's how I close out. I'm just like, well, <laughs> just to grind off all the yeah. <laughs> all the stuff that's stuck to your fingers. This is this is the quickest way to do it. <laughs> yeah, and this looks super sloppy right now, but um, kind of like doing like a lot of art when I was going to to school and everything back in Canada. Um, one of the big things that I was pushed was like working from the general to the specific. So it's like. Start with a rough idea of what you're doing, and then what I'll do is I will remove material mm -hmm. and uh, kind of refine it back into what it is supposed to look like a little more clearly. Right. Start broad, get the shapes right. And then, yeah, and uh, what I'm wanting to do, what I'm wanting to do is I don't want it just this flat surface on here. What I want to eventually do is kind of create that like angled surface, so it's like the shield is like this, and then it'll be kind of instead of just a flat area on there, I'll have like just the angle. It'll have some body to it. Yeah. yeah. Some form. You know, you inspired me the other day and I made a tool utilizing your, I like to stick random things in pin vice idea. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, I was bored of doing rivets the same way we always do it. And I don't think this came out as effective as doing like the, uh, the leather punch rivets, but I actually took a piece of brass tube. I took my jeweler's saw and basically cut little saw teeth into the tip of the brass tube, oh, then yeah. stuck the brass tube in the pin vise, and then I would just spin it on a piece of styrene, and it would actually carve in nice. a rivet. And so it was super, super fast. Does that make sense? I basically created yeah. like a tiny hole saw. Uh, I wouldn't cut all the way through, I'd just create this so, circular groove. Funny thing, one of the guys, uh, Chris, one of the other physical engineers, yeah. um, he loves fabricating tools. I know, I geek out with him about it all his, the time. Uh, yeah. He made a copyright symbol tool for when we have to put copyright I in there. I love that thing. I should and show him. Yeah, what he did was he took, it's a tube inside of a tube with just a little notch cut out of it, and he just slid it up in there, so it creates that little circle with the C. <laughs> and all it is is just a stamp now, and it's like, that is the cl most clever thing I've it's ever seen. Yeah, that guy's awesome. So, 
as I'm going here, I'm just kind of like blending all the putty work together because I got like these little areas where the uh, patches that I'm sticking on are just separate. And then I'm just using the side of my knife to blend it all together. And I'm just going to go in with a brush and polish up the surface a little bit more, try and get rid of my fingerprints. Now, is there anything on that brush, Brian? This one? No. Yeah. No, uh, just a clean brush? Okay. Whatever muck happens to be on there from just residual, okay. probably a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on there, just uh, excess, but... Yeah, well, I was going to ask, I saw you clean the tool on the brush earlier. It made oh, me think that maybe it was loaded with this jelly. One, yeah, this other brush actually is just chock full of uh, petroleum jelly, and the reason I do that is um, put just a little bit on here, just so I get a little bit of residual petroleum jelly on the on this tool because it's not perfectly, perfectly smooth and putty does tend to stick to it. So that is so much cleaner than, than trying to put it on the back of my hand or something like that's that. That's what I always end up doing. I take a chapstick and just rub it on the back Cent of my hand. Center up on the screen. Oh. And right. just so stab myself. Looks times. like this side's a little, little off. So we're just gonna push the putty around and get it over to where I need it to go. Now it's just a matter of, let's just trim away some of this excess stuff. I want to work on the uh, Manifix before I get going on any of this uh, side rim stuff because what will end up happening is like inevitably if I go and do the outside rim and then go to work on the Manifix afterwards, I'm going to stick my finger in all that putty work. I don't know how many times I've like been sculpting on something and then I'm like, do 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 do. Okay, I could probably should set this aside for a little while for the putty to uh, cure. Um, but I'm in a big rush, they need this really bad. Let's just go and then I'll start going. And then inevitably I'm like, did I just stick my thumb in my, yep, sure <laughs> did. <laughs> so Alec uh, has a question about shield placement. He's thinking about putting some of his shields overhead so his TFG um, uh, could properly turtle up and, and have their shields um, facing outward. So how would you adjust the left arms to make that? Ooh, uh, well, depending on if you've got the metal ones that we have or the um, newer plastic ones, um, the metal ones, I th at least the guy that I've got here is one of the old, he's the standard bearer. Um, the joint on the arm, you could actually just raise the arm up and just kind of like bend the joint a little bit more to do it. Um, and you could do it that way. If you're using the plastic, which I love using plastics and resins, um, in that old ancient debate of resin versus plastic. I much prefer resin and plastic myself because it's easier to clean and work with. It's just my personal preference, um, specifically when it comes to like converting and things like that. Um, the plastics, all you do is just heat it up, bend it into place to where you want to go with it, uh, and just hold it there and then cool it off again, and it tends to stay where you put it. And also thanks to Stryker for Phalanx, which is the word I was struggling to find. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right now, just clearing out, like, you got the, the general shape of it, but you're just going in and clearing more detail and... Yep, just uh, now I'm just trimming away some of the excess and getting it to where I want it to be. If I get a little bit of my putty off there, I'll just stick on another patch and get it to go. Just like that. Yeah, I'm actually uh, really loving the um, league that we're doing, the Oblivion thing that we just started. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really big push, like uh, Hungerford on uh, Primecast, the last Primecast there was mentioning these guys and that inspired me to go with a super narrative thing to do for this league. So mm -hmm. I'm running uh, Pyrrhus and his retinue of Temple Flame Guard, which nice. is why I decided to go with the whole Trojan thing. Because the second I saw the Pyrrhus model, I was like, "That, yep, yep, that's yeah. uh, that's what I'm doing with fit it." For so, your look, yeah. So I ended up uh, starting with him, and then I was like, "Well, he's got that whole um, Temple Flame Guard." rule that gives him a uh, relentless, relentless charge. Okay, so now he needs his, his personal 
guard of uh, Temple Flame kind Guard. Of so, then, you, kinda, yeah. so then I decided to do that, and then it's like, okay, well, this is now a theme. We're just going to go with it, and um, hoping nobody else in the uh, staff here hears it, but I'm definitely throwing, like, I have to throw the Temple Flame Guard in there. Pyrrhus, Temple Flame Guard with the command attachment have to be in every single one of my lists right. because it's the... Like the story, yeah, right? it's very much the narrative of what's going on here. We need to get a, we need to get a photo of the, um, that awesome colossal you did and post that up too. You want to talk about that, the one with the organs on the shoulder? Like uh, that thing's kind of thematically. I love that. In that real, I love what you did there. Brian yeah. did a really, really cool colossal conversion, and I'm trying to make him talk about it because it's really sweet. I'll well, try to post a photo on our hobby and terrain Instagram. Uh, well, it was in one of the old um, No Quarters that we oh, did. Uh, I think it was like 69, issue 69 or something like that back in the day. Um, so it was in there, and it was in the Forces of Protectorate book. What was it? Yeah. You used the... The yeah. Vessel of... Yeah, if, it, if you have Explain seen it. what it is. Uh, <laughs> basically, I replaced the missile pods for the... Uh, Judicator and replaced it with the giant upright organ section of the um, Vessel of Judgment so that it is basically a walking cathedral. Its shoulder pads were basically giant organs and it was super, super cool. Yeah, and, <laughs> hey. and the missiles come out of the, out of the organs when it plays music. It's anybody, super awesome. Anybody wants to argue with me on that? They can. <laughs> it looks so good. What, you had to like cut the arms off and then extend it with like a big piece of dowel so that it was thick enough to yeah, place yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, because it's super wide. He, he, is, he is thick. I'm center, working on center a... up, Brian? Oh. I'm working on a Vulcan conversion right now for Extreme Colossal Wrestling for that ring that I'm making. Uh-huh. So, guys, secret project, super fun. I'm making an Extreme Colossal Wrestling ring for Lock and Load this year. That should be really neat. But, um... I, uh, I'm making an Extreme Colossal also. I'm going to try to do an insider on it uh, where I'm taking the Vulcan and I'm like cutting off his hands and replacing them with like grind balls. And instead of having the wheels, nice. like, the, the, I'm going to give him grind, the grind uh, pillars mm -hmm. as like the big wheels. So <laughs> it's just going to be this like mashed up, like Mad, Mask, Mad Max esque, you know, Vulcan with big spike fists. Should be fun. Very nice. I actually want to see your finished uh, extreme colossal wrestling thing. It's pretty close to done. I'm just waiting on stuff to wire the LEDs slash learn how to wire LEDs. Other than that, it's done. So what I'm doing here too is just kind of like looking that both sides, like this side and this side, are both about even. And it looks like I'm a little big on that side, so I'll just take a little bit of that putty away. And I'm just using this to kind of push the putty to create that nice little outline of it again. And then on the inside, I got a little bit much, so I'll remove some of that. Ah, you move the light. Thank you, Tony. And when you're doing any sort of putty work, uh, once you actually start getting into the more refining side of things, um, absolutely try to not touch your putty with your fingers because you will always, always, always pick up those fingerprints and then you just have to get rid of them. Tip is a little... Smooshy. I always have a hard time too with the like top side here, trying to get like that perfect diamond shape where it's all. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, perfectly lined up. Whoa, Jeff, are you serious? What's up? Jeff says I oh. went to the hospital today and I have a concussion. Oh no, Jeff. I fell, hit my head on something hard in the bathroom, probably the rim of the bathtub. Jeff, I'm so sorry. Get well soon, man. Yeah, I feel better, Jeff. Now I feel better. Oh, now no. I feel bad messing with you. I had so many things planned today for our email chain, and I'm just going to hold them and wait. 
Don't pick on Jeff. <laughs> I was bad yesterday. Um, All right. That sucks, man. Get better. All right. So we got kind of the rough shape figured out here. Um, what I'm going to do now is go in and just use... Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, we got these little rubber-tipped uh, clay shaping tools. I Again, love those. Just They're so good. Picking them up anywhere at a craft store, hobby store, art store. They'll have those. And... And spend money on them. Don't cheap out. Yeah, well, I like the good ones. And one thing I want to point out is, is, tell me if this is correct or not, is that the black-tipped ones are the ones you want because they're more firm, right? The gray-tipped ones uh, for different applications, or does it make a difference? So, so the main name brand one that uh, that he's know. holding, uh, the black one is the firm. Yeah, and so the gray one is the is like the semi fair or medium and the white ones are the soft now i actually use both in different situations um i would say that yeah the most versatile and is are the black ones hmm. um but i do have a few gray ones that i use if I've, i really need a gentle touch yeah i've uh, never actually tried any other ones i I'll just have these ones and they them. seem to work pretty good for me so i'm happy with them but i usually sculpt you know i sculpt a lot bigger right uh yeah. you know if i'm doing sculpture for terrain it's like you know, a larger size thing. So that, you know, it means a softer, a softer clay. So I need that, that soft touch, right? Yeah. Which I can get from the medium tool. Um, All right. But those things are awesome. So then I'm going to use just a different shape, shaped clay shaper. And now I'm going to come in at a different angle here and start creating that angled tip look that I'm going for. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Man, I've spent so much time in hospitals. It's really bad. Um, so you might be able to answer this question. It's something I struggle with, and I've gotten better about... Uh, well, there are many, many things I struggle with. But um, when I'm doing uh, brown putty work, uh, if I'm smoothing using a tool with Vaseline... Um, and then I try to add more putty on top of it, I get this weird line, you know, like, like my putty, I have trouble Where getting that joins. second. Yeah, and, and so, uh, yeah, uh, words are hard right now. Yeah, what Help. you gotta do is, uh, <laughs> like, you just gotta work it, like work the surface a little bit. Like if you look really close here. You get the weird draggy line thingy, and how do yep. I make the draggy line thingy go away? The draggy line thingy go away? So what you gotta do is just, again, just like I've got a little bit of one right here. You just uh, kind of knit it, knit it together. So you just kind of like. And could you maybe explain better than I did what I was talking about? Like what happened? Like It's the seam between two different points of putty that are coming together. And you will have like just that little line there. And just kind of like scratch ever so lightly. Almost like you're scraping the resin. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And you just put it back and forth. And again, like we're going to be going in and cleaning this up after it's all cured. Right. And go in with, uh, that's where I'll bring out things like my sanding tools, mm -hmm. uh, hobby knives, things like that to kind of like do the final trimming. I'm not too terribly worried about getting things 100%, but the closer I get it with wet putty work, the less post putty work I have to do, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So again, just... Scraping stuff away. Oh. Please don't fall off. There's nothing worse than like spending all this time putting a rivet or something on and you go to start like cleaning it after you've got, spent all the time yeah. um, curing it and everything like that. And then all of a sudden the rivet just pops off and it's goes. And it's like, off. it's the worst. It's, yep. It is the worst. And story of my life too. Like that yep. is, I have a very very heavy hand that's actually my biggest weakness i'd say in this career is i have just like i am a bull in a china shop which should be a surprise to literally no one finesse or subtlety is not a thing i have yeah. so that's why making custom tools is very like i have had to come up with a lot of tricks to overcome the fact that I don't have very fine, precise motor skills. And so I've just had to like learn to meditate because there will never be a sculpt where I don't pop a rivet when it's yeah. done. Like it will never happen. I will always be adding that last little thing. 
Well, and that's the thing with putty work is it, it actually really surprises me, like continually, how soft of a oh like pressure it takes just to put like a little um, dent in something. Have like. you ever watched the videos of like you know the the, yeah. the traditional sculptors like like the guys from uh, Spain or like like Patrick Misson or like uh, or even Brian Dugas, one of our previous sculptors yeah. who did a lot of FEMA work. Have you ever like I mean you worked with Brian like have a you, little bit yeah like go online guys and watch a video of like um miniature sculpture yep. in fimo yep just it, like look it's that so up so soft and the tiniest little movements it's and like, like you can see this this super fine tip one that i have here it just it bends all over the place but like it will put marks and just push putty around just ever so slightly and even just the tiniest little amount of pressure will actually get putty to just move around and like I saw a guy I saw a guy like add a uh, on a video add a uh, it's this awesome awesome sculptor I, for, I forget I don't know how to pronounce his name Joaquin Puelacos or something I forget but anyway um, I watched him do an eyelid and he actually like rolled out a separate sausage of clay Mm-hmm. And like use the needle to like pick it up and drop it right below this eye, and just like the most gentle touch to blend in the underside of that eyelid, so that the top edge, you know, still had that hard edge, but the bottom. I mean, it was like, how? Yeah, we, I've actually got a um, little tool that I use something similar like that, and yeah. it's made out of again just just a P3 formula like paintbrush handle that I just cut the head off of filed it down, and then I've stuck a, um, a sewing needle mm-hmm. that I had yep. heated up and bent. Bent, uh, that's what and I used to, yeah. It's just the greatest little probe for The good old bent applying, sewing needles, perfect. Yeah, and, applying putty to super fine areas. And yeah, uh, Brother Chaplain, is that how you say that, Cage? Uh, yes, uh, a lot of the French miniature sculptors do use, yeah, they use Fimo, um, Fimo Classic, um, normally champagne flavor would be the color they tend are, to use. Why are you eating it? It's the color they like. Um, plus, it's tasty. But, uh, yeah, no, they use, they use FEMA for the most part. Um, and that's, there are advantages to it and disadvantages. Um, you know, it never, it never cures until you put it in the oven, so you have a lot of working time. Yeah. But and it's harder to get, like, durable pieces, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually one thing that um, a lot of people ask me. It's like, oh, why do you use brown stuff or, as opposed to, like, the green putty and stuff like that. And uh, for me, it's uh, the green putty I use for, I'll only ever use it for like organic shapes Mm -hmm. like mussels or whatever because it doesn't hold, tends to not hold edges nearly as well as the brown putty. I I hate, I actually hate, uh, sorry, I keep interrupting you. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I hate green putty. I hate it. Yeah, I've does. never been able to use it well. It has this, it has a spring back to it yep. that really bothers me. So I have to account if I'm trying to like, all right, best example would be if I'm trying to pull down a jaw, yep. right? Uh, I have to account for the memory of it and it will spring back ever so slightly. It doesn't stay where I put it. And that's why I'll always mix like, you know, epoxy sculpt. They're like a magic sculpt yep. into it. It also doesn't sand. So the brown putty, our brown putty is amazing because it chisels really nicely and files really nicely. Yes. And, and green that's- putty doesn't it's like a rubbery thing yeah that's um, actually my favorite uh side of our brown putty is dude, the, the post carving it's so nice it yeah. carves so beautifully um have you ever mixed our brown putty with a cheaper epoxy too like like a magic sculpt uh no it's I amazing so you get not. the you get the best of both worlds where you can actually like slurry it and smooth it super easily with water oh yep yep i've done that before i yeah. actually use uh, rubbing alcohol nice uh, when i do that because it just evaporates out and tends to not um See, I use, I use rubbing alcohol a ton curing time a whole lot, so. if I'm using the super cheap plumber's epoxy, so like, you know, like a propoxy or something, right, um, where it's, you know, the steel reinforced stuff for pipes. Mm-hmm. I use that a lot on terrain because it's super strong and I'll always smooth, but you've only got five minutes to work with it, right? Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll, smooth, um, I'll smooth that with, uh, with alcohol. Sorry, I'm reading this chat. Van de Beest, please do not ever lick your... Sculpting tools. Well, I, I do want to. I do want to point out. We were talking yesterday on Get Your Paint On about the fact that I specifically am am quite a bit of a brush licker. Yes. Uh, I tend to put the brush in my mouth a lot. Part of that is because I do a lot of two brush blending, and so I get used to having the brush in my mouth. Uh, obviously, you don't want to put tools in your mouth as a general rule, but 
have you ever accidentally or like semi-intentionally licked one of your tools for working? So I never lick my tools because, no. well, because all of my tools are, uh, I use for a million different materials and mo uh, I'd say three quarters of those materials are toxic to ingest. Yeah. yeah I, How, however, and speak to this, Brian. Uh, yeah. Hop back in. There, there's too much, like this stuff is toxic. I do not want it in my body. Uh, that said, um, if you're ever looking for other stuff than Vaseline, because Vaseline, like, it's it is an oil-based product. Um, it will stay there. It take like if you really want to get it off after like um, after you're done with it, you have to use soap and water. Right. Other things that work actually really well is a little bit of spit. So if I need to, I'll just patooey into a little container. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Just use a brush like that. Or, and this one actually gets you a lot of funny looks if you're mm -hmm. ever working in public. The is, nose? No. Oh, so personal I got lubricant. Excited. Yeah. KY Jelly is amazing. KY Jelly rocks. Uh, and, and it's really funny. We use it a lot in stop motion, too, as a because it's animatable water. Oh. So you can actually, if you have drips going down a glass, you can, like, you know, move it. But, but it's, the nice thing about it is it's, it's as, opposed to, as opposed to Vaseline, using KY jelly as a, as a release for your putty, is it, it's much more water soluble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right now. Yep, and that's the big one is the water sol solubility. And, and striker 911, I actually, you'd be surprised. I'm very, very careful about what I ingest. I use so many, it's one of the few things I am very careful about. Um, I use so many chemicals all day that I really like, you know, I try to be pretty, pretty careful about it. Now, one thing I do use spit for actually is, uh, and I never lick my tools, but I'll lick my fingers. Um, is uh, Sculpey, actually. Um, uh, I, I use, I'll lick my finger if I'm using Sculpey because for some reason, like, whatever the enzymes are in saliva just dissolves the surface of the Sculpey in kind of a weird way and allows you to get this really nice smoothness without distorting your surface. Also, another one that gets you weird looks but is the best thing I've found is uh, the oil behind your nose, like not in your nose, but like where your nose connects to your mm. cheek. Weird. You always that, have the, that little groove right yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Try this, put your tool on it, and you will never have to re-dip. I know it sounds really weird, but a like old sculptor in LA showed me that one. It just oh. occurred to me to do the most childish prank to one of your tools, and it's completely impractical, but just to put like a bunch of black ink on it so that when you... When you put it right along your nose, oh, you just oh, get like no. a black, oh. kind of oh, like, like the that old, old uh, roll the quarter down Yeah, the your, old uh, pirate scope yeah. thing, yeah. Amazing. Are we about to talk about office pranks? Because no, oh, no, 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 no. Darn we it. Don't, we, don't do <laughs> we don't do that around here. Uh, no pranks. So for the top of the Menifix here, um, what I ended up doing was originally just had it just as a flat, smooth, filled-in area, and then I just took this little scraper tool that I have. It's just kind of like a little rake is what we call them around here. And just am uh, digging out and just kind of like pushing and digging that area out so that it has that uh, angle that I'm looking for. Just to kind of create that idea. And again, like I want to try and get this as much as possible uh, while it's in the putty state of things. But this is all going to be done and once this is cured I'll go back in with a knife really sharpen up those edges so that it's a nice like crisp sharp tip uh, you can see it's a little rounded here but for the sake of time I could probably spend a few hours working on this uh, just to get these exactly how I want them because one thing that I found big with putty like doing any converting hobby work is um, take your time. If you think that you've got, it's like you're, anytime you try and rush something, yeah. you will inevitably, inevitably screw it up and have to start the whole process over again. Well, that's the thing. It's like, especially with the brown putty, you can always add more brown putty. You can yep. always remove more brown putty. It sticks to itself beautifully. So it's like, that's why, you know, something you've always recommended to me also is like under mix, man. Like don't mix a giant glob because then you're not going to feel the pressure to like, to, um, what was I going to say? Words. 
Oh, you're not going to feel the pressure to rush and like use all of the putty. Use it like, before you can, it starts yeah, to Yeah, you can build yeah. it up in layers, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm just, I'm like really upset. I can't talk about pranks. Can I at least say one? No. no. <sighs> Big sigh. All right. So we're getting pretty close to that point where I'm happy enough with the Menifix to do the rough work on it. And then I'll just go in, like I said, once it's uh, cured. And we'll just go back to this one here. This is like, again, four years old. Like this is part of where I was. And this is actually something I really love is going back to my old work and looking at it and like just cringing at how bad things were four years ago. But I mean, how far have we all come in, in you know, however long we've been doing the hobby. So for example, this one here, it's all cured, all finished. Uh, we'll just go back in and just and so now you're actually sanding. Yep, taking my little uh, rat tail file and just sanding this material down, getting rid of any of that rough surface and just refining those sharp tips that I'm really looking for. And if you have any sort of like little kind of dips, grooves, uh, rough spots, whatever, uh, when you go and put paint on it, it will pick up any of those little you know, imperfections. You know, it's really funny working on these videos with you because I, it, it just goes to show like just how different everybody works to get the same result. Like there are a million ways to do one thing. Like I would yeah. never, and that's not like, this is a perfect way to do it and it's going to look amazing. I would never have done this like this, like ever. And that's not a, that's not a, this isn't going to, this is a beautiful way of doing it. My hands just don't work like yours. Yeah, like, I mean, if anybody has a book, it's like, this is how you sculpt right. miniatures. It's like, no, what? that's not. No, everybody like, just makes it up as they go along. I would have built the entire, probably the entire thing out of styrene. Like the ring. Yeah. The, the Menifix. If I needed details on the Menifix, I would have cut it out of styrene so I could use that as my edge guideline. And then I would have built putty on top of the styrene, right? Yeah. Um, or I would have sculpted it flat on a piece of. Uh, piece of clear acrylic so I could actually have the drawing of the Menifix below it mm -hmm. and I would sculpt it but I'd put Vaseline all over it and then right as it gets to that nice like leather hard face yep I'd peel it off and apply it like yeah um, it's, there's no right way to do it and it's just really fun for me to watch you do something completely different than how I would have thought to do it I love this stuff man yeah and so I'm using my actual sharp uh, blade here just to kind of like trim off some of those areas too. So like I want to get this chisel edge on the bottom side here. So I'm just going in with the knife and just Oh, so you're not yeah, so you're not even just cutting the edge to make right angles and clean lines like you're actually giving it a little bit of a bevel. Yep. Right. Which is why putty works much better for this sort of thing than just doing it out of styrene because he wants that it seems like you really want that. You're relying on that bevel to give it that kind of depth. Um now I guess how far do you take it in terms of like clean up and chiseling it while the putty's still wet uh, versus like, when do you say, all right, I'm gonna stop here and, 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 and sand it from, from uh, you, did that make sense? Yeah, um, it just, you kind of feel it out. Like I've, for me, it's just, I'll feel it and sometimes I'll just go and go and go until it's like, and the putty is telling me, no, you, you have to stop now. Right. Um, I Like if I keep going with it and keep trying to work it, it's just not gonna hold edges or anything and like, I mixed this up just before, like, as I was doing the announcements, I was actually just off camera uh, kneading my putty. Um, and so it's starting to get a little bit stiff for doing a lot of, like, more rough work. Um, and looking at it now, oh, shoot, we are really running out of time. That's um, all right. we, we, got, we got some time. All right. Real quick, I want one more thing that I really want to show off is... Uh, the rivets that I did along the edge here. Um, what I did for these guys is, I'm just going to lay down a little bit of putty on a thing. Where's my, th where are my tools? So... Like it was the edge of this shield here. We'll just 
smooth that off real quick. We'll just pretend that that's the edge of the the edge that I was looking for on there. Now, there's a couple of things that I could do for doing a rivet. Uh, one of them, you take a pencil like this, uh, just a mechanical pencil, you push the lead all the way back into it, and right there is your rivet. And what you can do, and this is again, one of those like found object things, is you just take your tip of your pencil, and this is what I did for this one, is take your pencil, you just kinda at regular intervals like that, and you get those little rivet marks. Uh, it, you have to push really softly, because all you want to do is get just enough where it's just barely going up into the, the hole of the tip of the mechanical pencil. You don't want it to stick there, and you don't want to create that like round outside divot area. Another thing that we've got, um, just because we happen to have them kicking around, is little syringe dispenser tips. Get now these ones are like steel. Yeah. these are like <laughs> ginormous, and those same idea. You just do a real soft press in there, and it creates again that rivet look to it. Um, if you really, 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 really want to, and like there have been times when it's like we've been cleaning or something like that, and there's a build support that's attached to a rivet, and it pops off. We have to rebuild the rivets. Mm -hmm. That's where you actually use like a tiny, tiny little wad of putty and then just create that bubble effect of the rivet and away you go with that. Um, and that's how I, I did the rim of the shield on that. You using a pencil reminded me of a tool that I lost recently but oh, yeah? used to use a lot where I had like one of those nice like mechanical pencils with the metal tip, which mm -hmm. is great for poking those rivets in and I'd use it for that because um, it had the very yeah. fine metal tip, but also it's like 0.07 lead, so you can buy 0.07 music wire. Mm. And so I'd hammer out oh. little tool tips, like little tiny spatulas or like the bent needle. Yeah. And then I could store those tips in the back of the pencil. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and it would, yeah, you could just have a multi tool right there. Uh, so, also, real quick, as we're just going to go running out of time, I just want to go one more quick thing on this is when I was doing the horsehair helmets, uh, very, very like, when you think Spartans, you think this kind of helmet design. Um, all I did here was just put a little bit of putty on the top of his helmet just to kind of create that uh, space for it to go. And then a little bit of styrene, and you just cut it into whatever shape you need. Where did my scissors go? Put that up on the camera. A little higher if you can, bro. Sorry, a little, forward. little more forward. Oh, towards the logo. My bad. Again, this is just super rough. Take the clippers there, and then just take my hobby knife and kind of dig out like the shape of the helmet and just do a little bit of guess and check work to create that idea or create that uh, place where the helmet's going to go in there. Very carefully. Very carefully. I've got ridiculous calluses on my thumbs and uh, forefingers, so like, and this blade is, like, I actually prefer when I'm using hobby knives and stuff like that. Um, I don't like them, like, fresh out of the package sharp because they're just too sharp for what I need to do, and I like them when they're a little bit more dull. sharp all the way because when I do inevitably cut myself at least it's a clean nice cut and not a dull rend in my The only time flesh. I really cut myself anymore is when I'm cutting molds. Well look at you yeah. <laughs> all now watch, fine motor skills. Yeah, now watch I'm going to go and like just you know remove a finger or something so you can see um, just cutting that out and fitting that into there. And would you just glue that on once the yep. uh, putty's cured? Yep, just glue it on there. And um, once it's glued on, I'll just go in and take my fine little scraper tool that I was using for scouring earlier. And then all I do is just scratch in the 
lines going from the center out to the edge. And it oh, kind of nice. creates that effect of looking like hair, like the really fine horse hair element. So that way, when I went and put the wash on afterwards to paint it, it just creates the perfect hair look to it. Now, Danny's done some stuff in the past that makes me think that you could also kind of gouge the top edge to make a give it a look of like variation and like the, the hair height isn't quite perfect. Or oh, exactly. Like that. Yeah. Add it, chip add it a yeah and that's top. something that I do too is it's not just the 2D surface of this flat side and this far flat side. It's looking at the top two and just going in and Right. Okay. Yeah. Scratching all along just to kind of create that effect that hair is a three dimensional thing despite how flat and tiny it is. Well, and that's something I'm really into all the time is like I focus so heavily on just overall silhouette yeah. and not as much the super fine detail for me. Yeah. Uh, it's like what's the quick read, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, final, uh, final thing here. Now, we've completed this, we've finished it. Sadly, I don't have enough time to complete a full uh, shield there. Um, but what I've got here is this is the master copy of what I've done. Um, initially, what I want to do is if I wanted to, I could do this, what is it, a 12-man unit for the full unit with the uh, command attachment in it. I don't want to make 12 of these shields. Uh, so what I want to go, <laughs> does technical difficulty screen, uh, it would have to have like a little cartoon of somebody holding their hand screaming, yeah, there's right. blood, yeah. Um, but what I'll do is, what I want to do is make a bunch of copies of this exact one so I don't have to create the same work over and over and over again. So what I'll do is I'll go and take this and then put just a little bit of super glue down, glue it to a flat sheet of cardboard, uh, I've used the covers of binders, whatever. Um, glue it down so it's nice and secure there, put like a little box of cardboard like around it kind of a thing so it's nice and enclosed, and then um, just pour whatever kind of mold making material you want over top of that, and boom, you got a mold. Once it's all cured and ready to go, you can make as many of these shields as you want for the full unit. And that boom. is the Trojan Temple Flame Guard. Nice, Brian. Wow. So let's see, uh, before we get out of here, just in case anybody has any last-minute questions to answer, if you've got any questions for Brian, how to make Temple Flame Guard, or make other conversion, or, or oh yeah, and custom pieces. Yeah, if you guys have any really cool kit bashes, hashtag P3 Kit Bashers. I would love to see them. I love seeing people's conversion work. And uh, one more thing, if anybody has, like, has the time, go back and look at some of your old, old, old work that you've done. Go back and look at that first miniature that you painted and then put it side by side with a miniature that you've just painted and just really marvel at how far you've come along because it, even if it's just the tiniest little things, tips and tricks, it's the coolest stuff that you get to see. Yeah, we do plan on, if we see some really cool stuff, uh, tagged P3 kit bashers. We do plan on showing that on stream, correct? Like yeah. We, yeah, I would love to. I monitor that uh, the Terrain and Hobby Instagram pretty heavily, so I, uh, I check a lot. Let's All right. Seeing some of All that right. Stuff. Go so, ahead and take us out of here, Brian. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. It's been a total pleasure, and I hope to see you guys all again on the next stream. Um, take care, and have fun kit bashing. Take care. Bye. Bye.